Welcome to another episode of Out Loud Geek, where we discuss news and views about pop culture, science fiction, fantasy, food, cooking, the outdoors, and more. An LGBTQ romantic comedy opened up this past weekend in theaters called Bros, but it didn't do very well. It bombed. It only made around $4.8 million. Well, its star, who also produced and wrote the film, Billy Eichner, decided to put the blame on the audience on Twitter. And, you know, not in a very pleasant way. So I never see an excuse for that. There, there's really no reason to do something like that. It's really very childish to attack people because you didn't get what you want. That's really what it boils down to. Most people don't want to see movies perform poorly at the box office. So it's disappointing when a film like Bros featuring an underrepresented population doesn't succeed. Bros dismal opening of just $4.8 million and a string of eyebrow raising tweets from writer slash star Billy Eichner has sparked conversations about why the well-reviewed gay rom-com failed and if audiences should feel obligated to make a trip to theaters to prove they want to see inclusivity. Eichner, frustrated by the opening, turned heads when he tweeted Sunday, quote, straight people, especially in certain parts of the country, just didn't show up for bros, followed by a tweet filled with name-calling, basically, that I won't repeat here. Well, calling people names isn't really a good way to promote a film or to get people to want to go see a film, especially if it's a romantic comedy. People want to be entertained. Calling people names and whatnot, it's not a positive way to get people to go see the film. The tweets have not been well received. Shock. Eichner's tweets felt more like finger-wagging followed by moralistic confrontation rather than an invitation with a bit of warning. The author of this article is empathetic to the situation. It sucks to be passionate about something and not see that passion met by a willing audience. Yet, the author of this article thinks it's clear from the numbers that the box office didn't simply come down to straight people not going, Several critics suggested that people were turned off by a line in the trailer that said straight people, quote, had a good run, unquote, though I imagine that any straight person offended by that joke would have never seen the movie anyway. What Eichner is overlooking is that a significant population of the LGBTQ community didn't show up either. Is he going to attack those people as well? Whether it was because the film didn't appeal to millennial and Generation Z audiences who drive the box office, or because it opened in October alongside Paramount's well-reviewed horror movie Smile, Bros didn't make a compelling case for a movie that was a must-see in theater, even if people do agree that there should be more LGBTQ plus rom-coms. But that's comedy. While Bros does not feature any major stars as box office draws, the film is produced by Judd Apatow and directed by Nicholas Stoller. The former set the standard for comedies in the 2000s with Anchorman, The 40-Year-Old Virgin, Superbad, Bridesmaids, and the later directed comedy hits Forgetting Sarah Marshall and Neighbors. It's easy to understand why Universal and Eichner, best known for his roles on television, may have expected an opening similar to Apatow's R-rated rom-com Trainwreck, starring Amy Schumer, another love em or leave em style comedian with a big personality and a reputation for television. The film opened to $30 million in 2015, but it's not 2015 anymore, and comedy has been on the downward trend in terms of actually getting audiences to come to a theater to watch. And I don't think Eichner actually took that into account. This was made abundantly clear when Lionsgate's Seth Rogen, Charlize Theron-led rom-com Longshot underperformed at the box office, alarming Hollywood studios and pundits about the future of theatrical comedy. 
If Rogan, a 21st century comedy icon, and Theron, a beloved Oscar winner, couldn't sell a movie, what hope did anyone else have? Even then, Longshot opened to $9.7 million, a figure Universal would have likely broke out champagne for, albeit the cheap kind had bros made as much. It's become increasingly clear, even more so during the coup, that comedies no longer often move the needles in terms of drawing crowds. It's a disappointing reality, but if people are going to go to the movies, and yes, still risk becoming infected with the coup, they want to go for spectacle, such as Sandra Bullock in Channing Tatum's recent hit adventure rom-com, The Lost City. If audiences are going to be enticed to a theater for comedy, they want Comedy Plus, and they can get that from most Marvel Studios, Quite a few horror stories, Scream, Nope, Barbarian, and even blockbusters like Top Gun Maverick. Even a film like Crazy Rich Asians, which didn't just become a box office success solely through Asian audiences, provided an enticing element of spectacle in seeing Singapore's wealth on screen and the musicality of director John M. Chu's visuals. Most comedies and rom-coms, if they aren't high concept, present themselves as movies that feel like they can wait for streaming. <laughs> well, and again, this is something that Eichner didn't take into account. When Hulu released Che Duvall's lesbian Christmas rom-com Happiest Season, starring Kristen Stewart, it dominated social media chatter Thanksgiving weekend in 2020. Apatow's Pete Davidson comedy The King of Staten Island had a simultaneous release on streaming and theaters earlier that summer. And more recently, Davidson and Kaylee Kuko's rom-com Meet Cute premiered on Peacock. Had Bros premiered simultaneously on Universal's Peacock service along with theaters, it surely would have garnered more viewers and thus more social media chatter. It's a difficult thing to break the notion that a theatrical-only release is the best measure of success. But it's obvious that streaming has become a place where comedy can thrive and where people are more easily able to show their support for representation they do care about in genres they simply don't feel a need to see in theaters. And if the theatrical experience is that important to the film, I think the stars and filmmakers of Bros could learn a lesson from the black community who have bought out theaters for films like Get Out, Black Panther, Queen and Slim, and The Woman King, inviting people to see the film for free and spread the good word. As someone pointed out the other day in a Twitter conversation that the author of the article was tagged in, moviegoing isn't a charity and audiences have no obligation to see movies to prove their values. And that's absolutely the truth, and that's really well said. So there were ways that Billy Eichner could have promoted this film and potentially it could have been streamed simultaneously as the author of this article pointed out. And I tend to agree, but attacking people who didn't go see the film and calling them names isn't going to draw more people to see it. It's just going to make him look bad, which it clearly has, and people will be even less likely to want to go see the film. Even members of the LGBTQ community weren't really that drawn to it. So his attack was completely unjustified and it's really unfortunate that this has become a norm in today's hollywood thanks for watching today and a huge thanks to everyone who has subscribed to our channel we appreciate your support if you enjoyed this video please press the like button and please feel free to share a comment if you'd like to see more of our videos in the future and help support this channel please press the red subscribe button and please press the bell to receive notifications for new content. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter by clicking on the links in the description. Until next time, this is Outloud Geek.